Hello my beautiful people and adorable pets. So today we're going to do something different. We're going, or I am going, to react to Vice's video about Fendom. For all of you that don't know, I am a professional Femdom Fendom. I have been a Femdom Femdom for six years and I've been doing it online professionally for a year. So without further ado, let's get to it. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> that reminds me a little bit of like, I don't know. That was kind of creepy. I want all of your money. Financial domination is different things to different people probably, but it's basically finding someone who's their worth, giving the money that you worked hard for. Giving up money is giving up power, and they're not to give up power. As the underworld yeah. of BDSM continues to emerge on the surface of the mainstream, there are... Yeah, that's true. Um, power exchange is the basis of Fendom, and most kinks, actually. I can't think of any kink that, at the end of it or at the root of it, doesn't have power exchange. It appears to be a kink for just about anything. One of these thriving fetishes True. is something called financial domination, where submissives or cash slaves seek dominatrixes out online and surrender increasingly large increments of their money for little, if anything, in return. Ah, uh, again, okay, so that's, it does seem that way, but in actuality, it's the power exchange that is in retor retorn return. Um, a lot of them, it's a humiliation, even though like, it's not a contract, let's say, where you say, I'm going to give you the money and you're going to humiliate me. No. But they go and seek fandoms to get that. As with other forms of BDSM, the relinquishment of power itself triggers mm -hmm. a sexual release. Only yes. rather than whips and chains, it's money. Yes. I agree. Financial domination is a growing checkbox across fetish sites <coughs> on the internet. There are thousands of chat rooms online devoted to cash slaves specifically. One of the main sites for financial domination is called findom.com. And you see adverts like this. This is a woman saying, empty out your wallets. I don't give a single shit about your life. All I want is your money. The money that you work so hard for that I'll spend in less than a day. How do you feel about that now, huh? Of course, you'll feel satisfaction and pleasure because you served your one and only purpose in life. But I just, I'm not sure if it can be that, like, that simple that you just uh, like, say that to someone and then they give you their money. Like, it, I think it depends who you are. Like, if you're just like some random person on Twitter and say that, I mean, you might get someone, but, you know, the money's not going to just like flow in from multiple people or whatever. Uh, if you're someone more established or someone that works in the industry or is a fandom, whatever, uh, you know, like, yeah, that's the base of it. Like, that's kind of stuff, something I would say to my subs um, or to submissives that come into my streams. But if you're just like, I don't know, some random person, you just write that, like, you, you probably will probably get someone that we'll see and be like, ooh, you know, but it's not, it is simple and it's not. It depends who you are. To figure out if this was as cut and dry as it seems, I tracked down a cash slave named Stevo, who was given over his entire life to a he financial so happy dominatrix there. named Mixtrix. I met Mixtrix uh, online on uh, Fendom.com. Oh, give me two seconds. Okay, yeah, that was better because I feel like it was too flashing. I just noticed that really spending any type of money in like strip clubs see them outside the club even though i was married at the time then i moved to idaho and bought a farm out in the middle of nowhere to try to um part of it was you know semi-retire but another part of it was to try to um you know get out of that and i figured i'd be out away from nowhere but ended up finding it online uh, as, as fellow, usually uh, happens on the side said, he said you're living the dream i would I say um I would say that I haven't really used the site Fendom. So, like, don't ask me anything about it because I don't know. I haven't used it. <laughs> I've seen it, but I guess I just went another route. Slave has, but, um, 
<clears throat> you or almost none can ever actually do it. Or they're not How capable for income because they're useless. Do you <laughs> give to Nick Streets? Can have access to anything. I pay the bills. I don't really buy anything for myself. So okay, so she has full financial house, control. So. Is your relationship sexual? Not in the traditional sense. Like, what what kind of job do you do? Is work a dream? Do you have like someone telling you what to do all day? Is oh no. no, I've always been in management, so um, the other way around. I tell people what to do all day. Are you submissive in other aspects no, of life? No, not at all. Really? Okay, a lot of people that seek to be submissive. I mean, this is kind of stereotype as well, but um, they don't tend to be submissive generally in the in their life. Does not mean it's like the biggest percentage or anything like that. But a lot of people are not submissive in their everyday life and they tend to seek a more submissive role in the bedroom. Wink, wink. Um, but of course there's the opposite as well. There are people that crave control even if they have control in their life or they're at a higher position or whatever. They crave even more control. You know, every person is different, okay? Um, but a submissive man, like, there is, like, I feel the stereotype that a submissive man is, like, someone that is, like, in their everyday life, they have no power or something. It's not, like, it's very common to get men that are usually in a managerial position and whatnot, and I think it does have some kind of correlation as well uh, because they want to escape that societal expectation of a man having to make decisions all day and, you know, all that jazz, all that jazz. Really? I'm not a politics player at all at work. <laughs> no. I'll state my uh, mind. I'll, I'll tell my boss off if there's any, if I have any issues. I'm not submissive at all in the outside world. Although I didn't understand why someone would submit themselves to this extreme form of pain, or even how financial domination... I love, bless her heart, <laughs> this extreme form of pain. Bless your heart. <laughs> become a sure. of its own in the first place, the community is growing. I sought out one of the yeah. most exorbitant examples of this <clears throat> phenomenon, achieved by a dominatrix known as Matrix Madeline. Last year, while auctioning off a webcam session, an anonymous man from Australia sent her $42,000 online in one click. The man declined the cam session, and without a single further That's a whale sub. He disappeared. That was a whale sub. To be fair, whale subs, especially that kind of amount, it's not that common. Um, that's a crazy ass amount for only just like one tribute. Um... That whale sub must have been saving for a while. And then he's like, yeah. <laughs> that massive ass like release. I don't know. But it's not that common, like those kind of amounts. Like if for whale subs, it's quite common to send like one, two, three thousand, I don't know, maybe even like five. And then there are bigger ones as well, but the most common ones. They'll just kind of pop in, send like a couple of K, and then vanish from online for like months and then pop in again. It's kind of like how they roll in my experience. The most popular BDSM website in the world. We're about to go and meet Madeline, who is the queen bitch of financial domination. It's easy to put somebody in a submissive position and then fuck them. But to mind fuck somebody, you know, it you really have to get into their head and really yeah. understand where they're coming from and really understand what makes them tick. And that is what financial domination is all about because it is all a mind fuck. I feel like your career has also been able to blossom and grow with the internet and technology. Oh, absolutely. I mean, technology has really afforded my career and has given me the ability to be able to have these interactions with these men who are into financial domination. I mean, for instance, this man who lives in Australia, 
that sent me this $42,000, whom I've never met. How many of your counterparts, your work friends, or maybe... But yeah, she's totally right. It's about the mind fuck. It's about the mind fuck, basically. I like what we say, power exchange. It's all about this, right? And I think a lot of BDSM does have to do with mental stimulation. Um, or brain stimulation, which it's giving me a really weird picture right now. Just like a stick in a brain. like. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but that's about what it is. And it's not just like, yeah, send me money. Psh. You know, it's about getting to know them, getting to understand what makes them tick, what doesn't make them tick. And online, it kind of gets hard as well because, like, most... I mean, a lot of men have int issues with communicating. Let's start from that. Um, but also, you know, it's just, it's online. But it's it, it's something that you need to practice. You need to do again and again. You're going to try and fail. Um, sometimes you're going to fail even when you have a lot of experience. Because, you know, you might not be compatible with that person. You might not understand that person. Um, you might have a bad day. It doesn't matter. But that's what it is. That's the basis of it. Getting someone's heart pumping um, without sexual... Maybe not. Well, I... Like the stereotypical sexual element. Ah, this bitch. I mean, <clears throat> how much hate did you get in? People are saying, oh, you didn't do anything for this. That's so amazing. And it's like... I can see how people would think that, but I've mm. worked for 10 years to, you know, yeah. establish that sort of persona. Yeah, that, that's what I keep saying, like, and I said, I've said in my videos, guys, that it's not, it seems like it's for nothing, or it seems like it's, like, easy, and whoever says, like, I've seen a lot of videos about Findom online, and like, it's just so easy, like, you just, you just say it, and it's just gonna come, like, no. Like, when you're doing it and when you have a submissive, yeah, it's easy. Like, you know, in the actuality, it's not like, I don't know, you're not, like, digging a mine, for God's sakes. But um, it's not something that you're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't know, be a phenom and all of a sudden the money immediately is gonna come rolling in. No, it takes practice, it takes understanding, it takes knowledge of the work. It, you know, it takes years of establishing your persona, yourself. Your persona is gonna change with yourself as well. Persona, you know, and character that somebody was willing and able to, and and got off on pressing that button and transferring mm -hmm. that money, that forty-two thousand dollars. Madeline has mentored a group of dominatrixes in the art and psychology of financial domination. These women now have cash slaves all around the world. One of which is a slave they share from India, who goes by the name Fifi Kinky. So you're gonna put two hundred dollars in each of our customs for you accounts right now. Okay, mommy, just give me one second. Good baby. <laughs> I love hearing those little clicks of obedience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> This must seem so weird to people we that are not in the life. Useless, but can you do two things at the same time? Tell <laughs> us how much money you estimate you spend a year on financial domination. Don't lie. Shiny, um, uh, I, I have to take on this part. But I'd say since January. Okay, honestly, if this person doesn't know how much money he's spending on Findom and he's doing this, right? For a while like I'm, something tells me he has like a lot of money because he's like i'm not sure because you get like a lot of broke ass like fin subs as well where they will like save all their money for it so they know you know what i mean like they will know how much but he's like eh, i'm not sure it's like, okay a camera a new laptop and then sent me hundreds of dollars every month maybe a thousand so upwards of five grand. Can you please tell me what you would say financial domination is? To me, it's power. It's like the ultimate exchange of power. Men fetishize their wallets in a way that mm -hmm. is like incomparable. They compete with each other with money. They attract women with money. They spend all day working really hard. It's kind of what men are raised to do in their lives is to work really hard and make money. And then yeah. we come along and we take all that money. I was on cam like three weeks ago and somebody was sending me $42 every 30 
seconds, and they did it for hours. But like, obviously, you're taking pleasure from that as well, right? So like, someone's giving you money, you're like, fucking, it feels good for them, but you're like, feels yeah. good for me as well. Oh, like, yeah. forty-two dollars every couple of seconds. <laughs> yes. How do you stop that airy feeling, like that heady feeling where you're just receiving all of this money? Like, how do you just be like? Actually, That's a good you know, question. Stop. Some go deep and they want you to like literally budget for them. Like they want you to hold the password to their mm -hmm. bank account and they want you to create a legitimate budget for them that makes their life. Okay, for me, right? Uh, I don't do that. Like I don't, I don't like having passwords, etc. Like I will control someone's finances, sure. And I've had subs that I've controlled their finance completely, but I don't like holding info of their bank accounts and stuff like that i just i don't know i feel like that can just like cause trouble honestly but that's just for me right <laughs> i'm just gonna say that um but what were they were saying before is exactly what i was saying before um yeah but what they were what this girl was saying uh is completely true as i've said before and i'll say it a million times until people understand this kinks and fetishes are social taboos they come from social taboos either they come from social taboos or the other within society right so something that's considered out of the norm or the other or different or whatever the way that men held power was through their wallets and now it's kind of starting a little bit to change where it's not just men that do that but until very recently men had have have had all the financial power and women were completely dependent on that so and you still see societally there is kind of a little bit that um still that element in different regards so because still there is that social idea it gets fetishized and you know like even for example within dates you might see it like i most women i feel have had this experience where they're going a date and a dude won't want to pay for the date if they don't sleep with him or they will ask the money back this has happened to me um that they'll ask the money back because like you didn't sleep with him because they view it that way so of course that's gonna get freaking fetishized it's a little bit difficult when you're dominatrix is doing your budgeting <laughs> Do you know what i mean i'm like lunch money that is when you mm -hmm. have hit the climax yeah the pinnacle being physically turned on by i love it your wealth goes against the most basic human urges of greed and altruism in a hyper capitalistic age where wealth is paramount to defining who we are and what we are reaching euphoria by throwing it all away seems like the ultimate dystopian fetish to Michael Aaron, it's not you... though it's understanding what a fetish is like she just described it like that is the reason it is a fetish sexual minority because it's crazy that you know that idea financial domination he has studied the allure behind this intense eroticization of money there's a lot of people into financial domination who are very controlled about it these are typically people who have money to spend so they may have a lot of wealth and if they blew ten thousand dollars that's like you and I blowing a penny. When you read online and a lot of... Oh, yeah, but there's, I think, I don't know, he didn't say about this, but there are a lot of, like, people also that are not in that situation. You know the amount of subs I've had come to me where they're, they're broke? They want to take part in Fendom, but they can only, like, I don't know, they only have, like, $20. What is it? That's, Fendom is not for you then. Um, You know, but it's not just, like, people that have money. It's a lot of people that don't. You may fantasize about it, but if you're actually going through and destroying yourself in that way, mm -hmm. I think that the people who make that leap have other things going on that allow mm -hmm. them to act on being so self-destructive. I have clients who are dominatrixes, and the people who are real pros, when they have someone who comes or contacts them and says, I, here is my debit card, and here's my PIN number, and I want you to train me, um, they don't accept that. In terms of financial domination, then. And I said, like, I was saying this to another sub yet today, but um, if you feel that you're at a point in whatever fetish, and generally in your life, but if you're seeing that you're going self-destructive, because there, there is a difference between playing out the fantasy of ruin and debt, and there's a difference actually getting yourself there. So if you're getting yourself there, 
that is the time where you need to stop doing fendom and you need to go to therapy. I know this is not like a popular opinion within online Twitter fendom, but it fendom, just like any kink, is not supposed to actually ruin you. If you're getting to a point where you're getting it's hurting you, then A, you're not doing it right, and B, you should step away. And as doms, like I've said this before, I believe in ethical fendom, you need to be placing those boundaries on to submissives and promoting them to go to therapy. Kinks are supposed to help you release, help you feel calm at the end of the day, right? They are supposed to help you grow, not destroy your life. You know, like for example, a glass of wine is good for you. Drinking 10 bottles a day, not good for you. Okay, it's the same thing. It's the same concept. Cases, the, the doms outweigh the submissives for that particular yes. brand of kink. It's a function of our economy. At times of economic difficulty, you have more people entering the sex work field. So you have more sex workers and less clients, which creates a discrepancy. So in terms of financial domination, you're even more likely, I think, to have a lot of people coming into that because there's the appearance of this is easy money. Anyone who wants to do it can announce that they're expert at it. And I think that's like a problem with like a lot of Twitter fandom, which when I first saw it like last year, I was so shocked because it was so different from my experience with my life, like the lifestyle way. Um, but a lot of people that are online, they're not really, they're not doms. So there's like, it kind of gets a little bit cray cray. We are in a, I'll kind of use him as an emotional ATM. societal. Okay, hey, give me 50 bucks. I want 50 many bucks. Many things. Something and he'll give it to me. Let's go. <laughs> it's payday, bitch. Let's do it. Mixed Tricks and Steve O's life was certainly unconventional, but they somehow seemed content in their fringe postmodern romance. Steve O has given up quite a lot. For that like that relationship and turned into a lifestyle, years. basically. He um, so and a stepdaughter behind when he like turned into a, like a uh, lifestyle kind of subdom relationship there. Moved in with Mixed Tricks. Yeah, if they lived together at that point. Said went on a honeymoon to the Oregon coast and the very day we got back I I weakened and I gave a online dom uh, seven hundred dollars you know my family always had kids I come from a family of eight kids so uh, I wanted to raise kids and tried it for a while and just raised the kids for about six years are you still in contact not not really they're not too happy with me yeah I can see that what what would be a sort of typical client for financial domination on the male side like what kind of man educated successful smart interesting mm. guys no not all are rich you know no. they well you know what though they give what they can that's the point it's a sacrifice if you make a thousand dollars a week you know it's not that much to give away twenty dollars if you made four hundred dollars a week twenty dollars seems a huge amount yeah. You know what I mean? It just depends. You know, that's a lot to some people. So it's it's the sacrifice you're giving. It's not the, you know, amount. Mm -hmm. how, how much yeah, no, I, like the amount of people that come into Fendom and they have no money, it baffles me, honestly. Like, I'm talking about subs. Like, it baffles me. Spent on it's not the most, like, like a poor friendly so king. Mm -hmm. Over 100,000. You too, I don't know. More. <laughs> yeah. What's different from this relationship that you have with mixed tricks that you wasn't getting in your relationships before? I can be myself. I can say anything, you know, of course, respectfully, but I can say anything, you know, that I'm feeling or that I'm thinking. And I'm, I'm accepted. It's not, oh, you're weird. <laughs> Why would you think that? She's accepting. On both ends, you have people who are sort of on the fence. That's fringes. a weird shot. One person has a desire for this kind of domination. The other person just simply has a desire for money. And they are on the fringes, and one person says, I, I, I think I would like this. I don't know where to go with this. 
and the other person says, seems like an easy way to make money. Financial domination. Um, I would, I would like disagree a little bit there. It's not just like about money for a lot of, especially for lifestyle doms. Like it's also, I don't even think it's only lifestyle doms. I think a lot of fin doms like end up if they don't come in as doms, like actual doms. But they just come in as fin doms. I think they end up getting like a rush as well from it because it is a rush, you know. Like other than the fact that like people like money, it is a rush. Simple. No fetish ever really is, but perhaps money and the pain that comes with being destitute is the ultimate means of submission. The fear greater and the pain longer lasting. It's somehow unsurprising that there's a thriving community fetishizing the loss of capitalism symbol. Of power and control. Yeah. Okay, that was interesting. I don't know if I would call it the ultimate submission. I think with each kink and each submissive kink, there are levels to it. Um, but I do find it very curious how people find it shocking that it even exists. But I guess it has to do with the lack of understanding what fetishes and kinks are to begin with. It's a natural progression of a capitalistic society. Um, and a capitalistic society and a society which is patriarchal. That's why you'll see mostly men fin subs, like male fin subs and female fin doms. Uh, of course, there is the opposite as well. And there are quite a few male fin doms as well. But it is... Um, most common in that manner because of societal structure if you have any comments on the video or any of my thoughts or disagree please leave them in the comments below if you want me to react to a specific video again let me know in the comments below and i'll see you next time bye